Hello and welcome to my series of YouTube videos which show me making Tara a full body silicone fay baby. Please bear with me while I talk you through some facts about silicone doll making and excuse me for reading this from a script. My name is Carolyn Doughty. I am a sculptor and doll artist at Dreams Reborn. I also work in partnership with Jameer Graham at Our World of Chi where we make fairies, elves, pixies and other fay babies and characters in silicone. This series of videos will be showing me making baby Tara from a clay sculpt into a silicone baby. Part one in the series shows you how I make a silicone glove mould from the clay sculpt. Part two shows how I make a shell mother mould, cut a seam and remove the clay sculpt. Part three shows you how I pour a silicone baby using the mould and fix any seams or imperfections ready for painting. And part four and five, which I haven't yet recorded, so we'll follow on later, will show you how I paint a baby, mat her and then root her using a fine needle and mohair. I'll be making further add-on video later showing how I sculpt a baby out of clay. The purpose of this video is firstly for entertainment so people can see how these babies are made and how much work goes into them. Secondly, it is to help anybody who is already thinking about learning the craft or has started to work in silicone and wants to see how other artists work. As you'll see, I'm making this silicone baby by making a mould from a clay sculpt. I sculpted the baby myself by hand, so I have the right to reproduce copies of my own sculpture. It is illegal to make copies of somebody else's artwork. This means you cannot make and sell copies of anything that has not been made by you, including ornaments in your home, a child's doll, or a vinyl doll kit that has not been sculpted by you. The only way you can reproduce any doll is to either make it yourself in clay or buy a sculpture from the original artist with full permission from that artist to make copies. If you try and reproduce a doll from a doll kit and sell it or show it in any public place such as the internet, publication or at a doll show, this is illegal as well as being immoral and unethical. If you do so, you could be sued by the original artist. Similarly, when buying a silicone doll, even a second hand doll, always make sure you know the name of the artist who sculpted it and it has full certificate of authenticity. Okay, that, uh, that's all cured now. That's the, the nice um, seam. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna cut just, I'm gonna just slice off a nice, really clean edge for the seam uh, with a really sharp scalpel. You don't have to do this, it's just I like to do that because then when the seam is done at the end and it comes together, you can see um, you can see where the seam is supposed to come together a bit easier. So I'm just going to cut a nice flat area on top of where the seam is going to be. Not cut too much off because that defeats the object. This is a really sharp scalpel. I really shouldn't use scalpels because I generally cut bits off my fingers. I'm not very good with them but um, hopefully I won't do that today. As you can see you may be able to see from the seam there's like bubbles, there's holes in it. That's why um, it's better to get a really good non-thickened um, few layers down before you actually start thickening it. So I'm just getting, I'm just cutting back um, a fairly flat area. So you don't have to do this, but I just prefer to do it because then when I come to actually push the seam together, I can see better how it's supposed to go together. I know a lot of people hate watching left-handed people using a knife because it looks wrong, so just have to bear with me. Okay, 
So basically I've just um, sliced off the top so I've got a relatively smooth top. I'm not going to cut the seam at this stage, I do that at the end. So what I'm going to do now is make a, a shell for over this, the mother mould, um, which will basically hold its shape and then when I come to pour it, it'll hold the, the mould in place while we pour the silicone inside it. So I'm going to use a product called Freeform Air. You can get it from all the um, same suppliers that supply silicone. It's um, it's an epoxy putty and it comes in a bucket like that. Um, what I do, the first thing I do is I um, split it down into tennis ball size lumps to make it easier to know because you, you um, you mix it volume by volume, not by weight. So if you've got two lumps approximately the same size, you know that you're okay. And it ten well, it makes about 15 tennis ball sized lumps of, of each each colour. There are two buckets, like there are with silicone, there's the, the grey and the white side of it. What you do is you just literally squeeze them together and mix them. And once they're completely mixed and uniform in size in, in colour. You know that they're ready to use. Um, once they're ready to use, um, you can you've got a you've got quite a bit of time to use them. Um, again, like silicone, uh, it depends on the the temperature of the room, and it, with this, it also depends on the thickness of the piece you're using. So, um, the larger the piece you're using, the the quicker it will actually cure. It does take a bit of. If you've got a lot of this to do, you end up with sore hands. But I, I find it's brilliant to use because it's clean and quick. Um, it is expensive, but um, and also when it's when it hardens, it's it's rock hard, but very lightweight, which means it doesn't add weight to your mould like plaster would or other other things. Some people use. Um, plaster bandages, I, I've never got on with those so I just stick to what I know, so this is what I use um, it's, it, so it's an epoxy putty, I think they call it a bit like milliput but easier to use, softer but it does it does, it does does uh, form a really good lightweight shell ok, it's coming all nice and uniform, it's lovely and soft, um, so it's ready to use now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply it in three sections, which is what I do, it's just what I do, I put a section across the front and then a section either side of the seam. Some people do it in two but I, I do it in three because of the, uh, because of the seam. Um, I'll need more than this, I'll need, I usually use about Two, two lots of tennis balls per side, more or less. Um, sometimes more. Uh, obviously, if it's a smaller mould, a bit less. But I think I'll probably be able to do it in maybe two, two to three. So you can either pull bits off and, and apply them, or you can just spread it out. It can go fairly thin, but obviously, the thinner it goes, the more weak it is. So I'm going to do just a pleat piece across the front. Um, Generally, you don't go around corners, so you just go up to the edge of curves. So here, I won't go round the corner because you'll never get it off. You just go up to the bit where it's in the middle of the bend. Um, the arms are okay because when I come to take them off, I can crack those apart. The, the, sculpt, the sculpt will get broken as I open it up um, anyway. So, And I generally don't go up to the end of the arms and the legs. That way when I pour it I can I can feel um, and get rid of any air bubbles and, and um, massage it to make sure that there's no there's no uh, air at the end of the uh, fingers and, and that. So and the same with the ears with these being big big fairy ears. Um, I'm gonna need quite a bit more than this obviously. So I'm just going to put that on. You can you can sort of like let it. You don't need um, ease release 
on silicone it won't stick to it um, so that's uh, so just I just go up to sometimes I go up to the hand so that the hand will sit in the in the mold in a nice way um, I think I'll probably do that with this one um, so it takes a shape right I'm just going to mix some more okay I've made up another lot so I'm just going to place this on the uh, sculpt where I want it as well. Um, you can move it around once it's on. As I say, the main thing is that you don't um, you don't go past past the angle that you can you can actually get it off because when this hardens, it'll be solid. It'll be absolutely rock hard. So if you go around a corner. You'll never get it off unless you want to break the, the you can break the sculpt off like with the arms where, where I can break the arms outwards to get that off. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the ear peeping out like that. Um because um then I can I can I can uh, get to it. And the same with the other side. Um where the where this third of, um, of the mould finishes, I'm just doing a ridge like this so that the next part of the mould can, mold can go up to it. I will have to uh, use some use, some release agent on that because the mould will stick to itself, the, uh, the, the hard shell mould, the free form air. So I'm just going around the outside just making a um, edge once you've done a few moulds you'll you'll know what you're wanting to do a bit more um, that's something that will will only come with time really but um, you probably would start with something a bit more a bit, a bit smaller probably. Right, under the hands here I'm going to actually fit some of this this putty up into up to the bottom of the hand, which means that the hand can fit nicely onto the mould. You'll see this more when we actually come to to pour it to to, to demold it and pour it. So I'm just going to as I say the hand I can pull apart. It'll break the sculpt, but that the sculpt's going to break anyway. There we are. So that fits nicely where the hand sits. So when I put the um, the the, um, the glove mould into the shell to pour it, the hand will sit nicely onto that. I'll know exactly what position it's got to sit in. Okay. Some more putty. Oh, I may leave the the majority of the legs out. And I think I'm going to need some more. This is actually the uh, the largest of the three pieces I'm making, I'll be making. I'm going to make it reasonably thick so that it's strong. Yeah, yeah I'm going to need some more underneath there. So I'm going to, I'm going to make another tennis ball sized piece for this. Okay. Okay, I have my third tennis ball full. 
of epoxy that I've mixed. So I'm just going to put this on the remaining bit. I'm going to go all down the leg um, but keep the foot open at the bottom. Give that some support as well. Bottom here. So that's what it looks like. And the same with the other leg. It's really easy stuff to uh, to use, to be honest. Oops. The sculpt doesn't go sliding off the table. You don't have to do as 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 thick and bigger mother mould as this, but I'm hoping to get quite a lot of um, pores out of this sculpt. So I do want it to be um, pretty pretty strong and um, substantial. So what I've, I've got is um, a third of what the what it's going to be with nice nice ridge at the end for the next bit to go up against. So those pieces will go up to the end of it, up to up to this bit and fit flush with it, hopefully. I don't drill holes to, um, to to bolt it together or anything. I don't. I don't think it's necessary to to go to those lengths to 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 have it fitting together. As long as it just sits together nicely, you've got all the support you need when you come to do your next piece. When you come to do your pour. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to cure. Once that's hard, I can do the next piece. Next piece of the um, mother mould. Nearly there. Okay. Okay, um, that first side is now solid. It's rock hard. So uh, we're ready to do the next side, and I have actually remembered that I need to use the mould release. Um, you really have to remember that because you really stuff up if you don't use it. Now I use this, um, I use wax, I just use honey wax, um, but it's gone all dry um, so whereas I used to apply it with a brush, um, I don't, I can't now, but it still works just as well so I'm just going to rub it on uh, the edge of the edge of the mother mould just so that when this, the next piece goes up against it there will be this layer of, of wax between it and it'll come off come away nicely. It's it's I find it's the best thing. Vaseline doesn't work, I don't think, quite as well. In fact sometimes I think Vaseline makes it worse. So so I'm just gonna rub it over all the edges that the next bit might touch. All these 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 flat bits um that are left place the next piece of um, piece of mother mould up against and here. Right. 
All right, so I'm going to do this bit here from the seam downwards. So that's nice and and uh, coated. Okay, so again, I'm going to make some. Um, I've got just a piece left over from the last one. I was just doing a mould for um, the little little butterfly baby. So again, I go down as far as the as far as that mould. Obviously, keep the um, the big where the the, the poor spout's going to be, and I take it up to the top of the seam so that the two pieces can go against each other. So I'm going to mix again probably a couple more tennis balls full of this. Okay. Okay, I'm on the uh, third side now. I've that's the second side I've done. Um, obviously the first side, and I'm on the third side now. So I'm just starting that one. I need to make some more, make some more putty. It's coming along nicely. Just make some more. Okay, I've uh, mixed up another lot, which I'm going to put on. I think I'll probably need one more lot after this, actually. But um, it's very soft and malleable. Up another lot. Although it's quite strong, you don't want it to go too thin um, because it can it can break when you try to take the sculpt off, um, which isn't a huge deal because usually it can uh, either be repaired or or it won't matter too much. But definitely need another lot. Okay. Okay. Um, all three sides are on. So that was the first side. That was the second, and that was the last side. I've marked up the mould because, to be honest, they all look the same um, when they're demoulded. So it's easier to see what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to have a go at, at getting the mother mould off. Um, it's it's it takes 24 hours for this free form air to completely harden, but um, I'm going to see if I can get it off now. So what I'm using is a screwdriver and a hammer. So here goes. Okay, I'm going to just see if I can ease it open. If I can't open it now, um, what I'll do, I'll just um, leave it till tomorrow. Sometimes, sometimes it will open, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it just breaks. <laughs> I'm uh, not the most patient person in the world.
just keep going round and round and round until something gives. Or breaks. first side off. So that's what the, um, the mould looks like. Very lightweight, very tough and this hasn't actually cured for the whole 24 hours yet. So that's the first side off and so we just keep doing this until we get all three sides off. Now it doesn't matter about the um, sculpt underneath the mould, but we don't want to make any we don't want to make any holes in the actual rubber bits. That's the main thing we need to pre uh, preserve. a teeny bit longer for this this side it's feeling a little bit chewy as opposed to another bit that's gone over Problem at the bottom here. Where?
sometimes if the uh, foot of the uh, sculpt is stuck in, in I've just had to chip the, the, the bottom bit away from that. I like to put um, a covering under the bottom of the, of the foot so that when I put it up right it's got something to sit on rather than on the squashy bit but that's okay I can actually glue that back on once I've opened it all but it's stopping it from um, from coming apart I think a little bit Sometimes I get stuck. Sometimes you just need brute force. An area that's sticking in there which may crack. Yeah. Okay. There we are, second piece off. And this final piece, I shall probably have to break the arms away to get it off. So I'll just get that off in a sec. Okay, all right, I'm just going to pull this away. And this, as you can see, there's the impression of where the hand is being. screwdriver through the mould because this last one is always the worst to come out. So you have to really feel for the sculpt beneath beneath the rubber. You can ease it out with the screwdriver but you just have to be really careful you don't put your screwdriver through the rubber. in the mould and it rip. This is a bit of hate as much as anything. This and getting the sculpt out of the mould, which is horrible too. The sculpt's already broken inside there, which is okay. It's, you're never going to get the mould out. The sculpt out in one piece. It doesn't really matter anymore. I like to get the head out in one piece if I can, but um, I don't know why. It just doesn't feel right to have the head broken up. But there we go. 
Adam's little Tara. Tara the Terror. Except she isn't a Terror, she's beautiful. Here we are. So, there she is. So that's the last piece of the mould, of the mother mould. Okay, that's what that looks like. So, we have our sculpt back out. Well, our main mould. What I'm going to do now is cut the seam. Um, okay, I'm going to have a bit of a break first. Right, what I'm actually going to do is cut a pattern so that when the seam goes together, it'll fit together exactly. So the top bit is going to have a key, a Greek key type pattern like that. But as well as that on the top, which will fit it together and lock it, I would also aim to get an angle going that way and an angle going that way, which means that it will lock together, hopefully, perfectly. Um, and I'll get as good a seam as I'm going to get. Um, so that's what I'm aiming for. I'm using my scalpel, which as we know is really sharp, I've just renewed it. Um, so first of all I'm going to cut down just a short way, but cut the actual pattern in it. And then once I get the pattern on the top, I'm going to try and get an angle that way and an angle that way. So that we have like a chevron and then the key pattern at the top. That's the idea. It might seem a bit intricate, but that way um, if I can get it right, um, it means that it means that not only does the seam not go like that too much, um, it comes to exactly the right place. It doesn't. It also doesn't go like that. So it'll come together exactly the right t place at the top, and it won't overlap because it'll be at an angle. That's the best way I can describe it. So I'm going to start at the top. Um, I'm just going to cut into this top bit. Can you see? So I'm going to just cut the key pattern. This is why I need a fairly wide seam. Now some of it may, it hasn't gone through to the sculpt yet, but at some point it might do. But if I can get that angle in some of it, then that will make a difference. Right, I'm going to go straight down to this bit now. Um, that's where I'm going to stop. It's got quite a nice lot of padding there. Okay, so I've cut the key pattern in. Um, what I'm going to do now is cut an angle. It as 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 clean as I can. Um.
Right, and then I need to cut the angle going the other way in as far as the sculpt and then, then without cutting my finger off, preferably. So we've got all sorts of angles going on here. It's the idea. Which means when it comes together, hopefully it'll come together cleanly. That's, that's, the, that's the plan anyway. say without without preferably without taking my finger off Right, I do seem to have a nice deep seam here. So what we've ended up with is, if you ignore the crumbling of the sculpt down there, because that doesn't matter at all, is this pattern and a nice deep seam there. So that will hopefully fit together nicely when I come to pour it. Okay, I can ignore that now. So what I have to do now is get the sculpt out. As you can see it's all crumbled on the back uh, which is okay. Um, probably because uh, the final coat wasn't had problems with the sculpt falling apart towards the end so the final sculpt, final coat on the back I didn't um, probably harden as much as I should have should have done but didn't, it really doesn't matter because um, it was good enough for the mould hole so we just need to get this off right, her ears have come off I out. All this will just wash off this area, the gear, and another ear. Looking good. So I'm going to get the body out and then I can get the limbs out afterwards. The uh, limbs can break off, it's not a problem. There we are. The main thing is that I don't, I don't um, pierce the mould at this stage. It's the mould that's more important. Get the 
and the scout. Scout's finished with now. All that hard work. Here comes the bottom. This out underwater. Um, rest of her hands and arms and feet. So I'm going to go and get those out of the uh, mould, and I'll be back. So after all that, this is all that we've got left of the sculpt. Box full of bits, quite literally. That's how she came out of the mould. Um, but whew, the good news is, is the sculpt's looking really good. So this is what the inside of the sculpt looks like. Um, there are all those patterns. It's picked up all the all the detail. It's wet at the moment because I've washed it. But that first white coat that went on, that's what you're seeing here. That's why it's so important to get that really good, really good. So I'm going to let this dry overnight and I'm going to do a pour tomorrow, see what, see what we get. I'm really, really pleased with that. Okay, thank you.